Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ved and I'm back with another episode in the Piper Arrow 3 tutorial series. In this episode, we are going to take an in-depth look into the fuel system of this aircraft. The first episode was all about history and specifications of the Arrow 3 and I'll leave that video link in the description and on the top right corner of this video. So make sure you watch that one before starting off on this one. Now I'll divide this video into two parts. I'll first walk you through a couple of fuel delivery types and then we'll talk through the fuel systems layout where we will dive deep into the functions and location of each component on our Piper Arrow 3. This should be fairly easy to understand for anyone so let's get started. Starting from the basics first. The basic function of the fuel system is to store the fuel, measure the fuel quantity, pressure and flow and deliver this fuel to the engine while having some kind of redundancy in fuel delivery. Let's start with the types of fuel delivery methods. The first method of fuel delivery to the engine is to feed the fuel by gravity. This can be done on any plane where the fuel tanks are placed higher than the engine. You'll see gravity fed fueling in Cessna 172s, 152s, 182s and many other high wing general aviation aircrafts. So as you would think, the fuel pressure reduces as fuel tanks empty out and fuel feeding while flying inverted also becomes impossible. So these are a couple of drawbacks of going for gravity fed fueling. Now coming to the redundancy part, even on planes with gravity fuel feeding being the primary fuel delivery method, there is always an electrical or an engine driven fuel pump present as a backup. This is only used during extreme maneuvers, let's say flying at a very high angle of attack where gravity feeding does not build up enough fuel pressure or it's used to prime the engine before starting it up. The second method to feed fuel to the engine would be through a pump. The primary fuel pump is usually an engine driven one and the auxiliary or the backup fuel pump is usually an electrically driven one. This kind of fuel feeding becomes a necessity when the fuel tanks are located lower than the engine which is on all the low wing airplanes like the Aero 3, Warrior, Cherokee and many more. Now that the fuel delivery part is done, let's jump onto the entire fuel systems layout and talk through the functions of each component and their location on our aircraft. Starting with the fuel tanks, they are located at the leading edge of both wings and are attached with screws to the wing structure as marked here on the top view. Arrow 3 has two fuel tanks, 38.5 gallons each, which is 77 gallons, out of which 72 gallons is usable. So for less than 6 gallons of fuel in the tank, it becomes difficult for the fuel pump to feed fuel reliably to the engine at all attitudes without risking air pull into the fuel lines. Arrow 3 has separate fuel quantity indicators for both the tanks at the bottom of the cockpit panel here. On the fuel tank bottom side, we have a fuel drain and a fuel vent. Fuel drain is used to drain out some fuel from both the tanks during pre-flight so that it can be examined for any kind of contamination or sediments. Now when we fly the plane and the fuel tanks empty out, there has to be air filling out that space, otherwise it will slowly create a vacuum which will stop the fuel delivery to the engine. This is what we have fuel tank vents for. They help replace the empty space in the fuel tank with ambient air. So during pre-flight, one also needs to make sure that these vents are not blocked off by any kind of foreign objects. The next component on our fuel system is the fuel tank selector knob. On Aero 3, it is located on the bottom left side in the cockpit and it allows you to choose the fuel tank you want to draw fuel from. Some planes have a both option on it as well, but this Aero 3 doesn't. On this one, you just need to keep switching tanks mid-flight to make sure you're maintaining the weight balance on both the sides. We'll go over the switch timing and all that in full flight videos of this series. So for now, let's continue with the other components. Up next is the fuel filter and fuel drain. Filter as the name suggests, helps clear out any impurities in the fuel and makes it fit for injection into cylinders. Here is another fuel drain point. This is the lowest point elevation wise in the fuel system and fuel filter resides right behind the cowling here. Fuel is drained out of this one as well in a container to make sure that it is clear transparent blue during the pre-flight checks. Then next in the line we have the electrically driven fuel pump. This can be called an auxiliary fuel pump because it is used as a backup. The function is to provide pressurized fuel to the fuel injectors in our engine when the primary pump malfunctions. 
Another function of this pump is also to prime the engine which means directly inject fuel into the cylinders during very cold weather to assist engine start. Then the supply line connects to the engine driven fuel pump further downstream. This is the primary fuel pump that always stays on in order to deliver fuel to the engine in every phase of the flight. While the auxiliary pump which is the electrically driven fuel pump stays on only for takeoffs and landings on normal flights. I will be linking a video in the description that goes over the working of these engine driven fuel pumps. It is extremely well explained there so I won't spend time on going over that in this video. The engine driven fuel pump is the final component that delivers the fuel to the injectors. Between this pump and the fuel distributor, there is a fuel pressure measurement. The fuel pressure indicator is located on the cockpit panel right here. Fuel flow is also measured before the fuel distributor and that indicator is right here on the panel. Oh and finally I forgot to mention the fuel that our aircraft uses. It uses the 100 LL or 100 octane low lead aviation grade fuel. It is transparent blue in color and it costs about 4.5 to 5.5 dollars per gallon depending on where you are at of course. Average fuel burn on this aircraft is about 12 to 13 gallons per hour at 75% power in standard conditions. Alright, so I hope you have a good idea about the fuel system on this aircraft now and you are ready for the next episode which is going to be an overview on the lighting system. If you are enjoying this series, please like the video and comment down below if you have any suggestions or feedback and please subscribe to the channel. It really helps the channel and my motivation to make these videos more than you would think. Thank you again for watching and see you on the next one.